Yeah, I'm uploading that uh, thing about the Commerce Clause. Uh, it, it was titled uh, Panic in the Year 2019. And this is shown uh, American Dictionary. Uh, Webster's Dictionary 1828. Why am I putting this up there? Because I left out something. Number one, I goofed up. I said 1891 to... 1934, that was wrong. It was 1791 to 1934, 153 years. Uh, I want to elaborate on something. I was talking about the Federalist Papers, and I was also talking about judges who studied the, who went to school and become so-called constitutional scholars, that they never studied the Constitution, that they only studied the writings of other judges, thus making the judge the law and not the Constitution. Now, why I brought up the Federalist Papers under the Commerce Clause was, in law, the best evidence rule states that if an original document or any other original item or proof is available, is to be accorded a higher degree of credibility in the courtroom. That's why I said, don't pay attention to those judges. Now, I'll say that one more time. In law, the best evidence rule states that if, if an original document or any other original item of proof is available, is to be accorded a higher degree of credibility in the courtroom. That's what I said. Now, when they when they talk about the the, the commerce clause and putting stuff under there, you got to go back. That's why I went back to the Webster's Dictionary, and it told you what what commerce meant. When they were writing the Constitution, and uh, these states were were giving giving them a lot of trouble, you know fighting among tariffs and tolls and and import taxes and all this stuff. That's why they put the Commerce Clause in there so that they could stop the states from fighting among each other and tearing apart the uh, country. That's what that's about. If you look back in, like I said, the Federalist Papers, that's an original document. Number, number 22 and 42 explains why they put the Commerce Clause in the Constitution. But Pelosi and all these other people up there, I mean, there was people before them, but they're trying to reinvent the Constitution instead of following the Constitution. FDR could make things work back in the day, so he was putting all these things under the Commerce Clause and most of them got struck down as being unconstitutional. But somehow, they didn't pay much attention to the 1934 law, and it got through. But it's in the Commerce Clause. The 1938 law, in the Commerce Clause. 1968 law, in the Commerce Clause. The Brady Bill, all these gun laws. They are under that. The, Ob the Obamacare, it's under Commerce Clause. You see how they're, they're abusing the Commerce Clause? Now, the Supreme Court will have a chance to remedy this. And if they don't, you can just nullify their damn laws. But something's got to be done. These people got to be put in their place and put in their place permanently so that this never happens again. Not, not for my kids or my grandkids. For the next litter of puppies that comes up. But you've got to understand what's going on. You've got to get hold of the gun owners of America. Donate them some money. Tell them what, what you're, uh, what's bothering you. And let's get this thing straightened up. If you don't throw money at it, you're not going to get it fixed. Because you're not going to get off your chair to go out in the street and protest. You got to go to work, make money, support your family, pay bills. So instead of buying that uh, $600 gun, 
donate half of it, $300, to the Gunners of America. You don't need that gun that bad because if they're going to take all your guns anyway, what good's it going to do you? Use your head. Use your wallet. Use your voice. Use your brain. Read the Constitution. And thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I appreciate it. I know I'm a little rough at the moment, but uh, I'm kind of pissed off. It should have never gotten this far. We let it. We let it. Didn't seem that important at the time. While well, we still had our gun rights, we still had them. But they just kept whittling away, whittling away. And once they start, they ain't going to stop until they get your guns. And then you have to ask yourself, why do they want your guns? It's not for the safety of your children. That's a bunch of crap. These are the same people who send your kids overseas to get killed. While they sit at home and live the life of Riley. Don't buy into it. Okay, that's enough for tonight. Thanks for watching.